therapy session for you today. <laughs> it is actually. <laughs> yes. Do you know what it really genuinely is? I'm glad that you've said that. Yes. <laughs> like talk about death and yes. love. And... But also I'm talking about what I've learned from the movie as yeah. well, which is, it's great. So you've been like in this movie and another movie that I just watched mm-hmm. where you're b- playing this really like sad or yeah. depressed and disturbed character. Yes. Does it affect you? <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's really sad, isn't it? I want to do something really light next, really comedic and so different. Yeah, um, you know what, It it's strangely enough, it hasn't really affected me in terms of, I feel like I learned so many incredible lessons from being part of Collateral Beauty. It actually changed the way that I, changed the way I live my life. Like oh, it wow. genuinely has. Because I am very, um, I'm very goal oriented. And I wasn't really paying attention to enjoying the journey at all. And collateral, being part of Collateral Beauty really reminded me about the gifts in the here and now. And so I've really tried to, you know, stop and take time to smell the roses. And it sounds really cheesy, but it's incredibly important. Mm. And you just had a big birthday too. I do. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> did that make you think about life? I mean, every time you have like a big birthday, yeah. we s- seem to, I don't know, get a little more, think about life in a new way maybe Mm -hmm. or get nostalgic um you know what again that was part of my whole thing of like changing my life to appreciate the journey more because what i did for my 40th was i um i celebrated for like the entire month instead of like you know (laughs) just the day i had about four or five different birthday parties my family um threw me a, a surprise birthday party a best friend threw me a birthday party like i had tons of birthday parties and it was just all about appreciating the loved ones in my life and appreciating that I've reached this age you know and and so that was a one it was wonderful for me and it's hard to keep that positivism I was just talking to Will and Mm -hmm. you know I feel like every time I meet him he's just the most so positive positive. (laughs) and so gosh yeah are you anything like that or do you have to struggle more to be optimistic and positive no I'm well, actually, having said that, I I don't think I'm like outwardly as gregarious as Will is. That's for sure. Um, and I don't have his energy levels because he's very yeah. energetic. Um, but I always do see, I'm very um, solution oriented. So I don't spend much time focusing on problems at all. I always think, okay, this has happened. How do I get around it? How do I get through it? How do I get where to, to where I want to get? Um, so I don't wallow in despair, which I'm very happy about. Yeah. Yeah, because that is easy way to, yeah. to, to take that path. Yeah. And especially, I think, in, in this movie, playing mm. a part where something so terrible has happened. Mm. Um, why do you think it's so difficult for us to talk about grief and death? Because I feel like if someone close to you lost it. someone, yeah. it's always hard to know what, what do I say to that person? Yeah. And why yeah. do you think, or do you have an opinion about that? What do you think about it? I think no words can ever heal, soothe, that kind of loss and I think we know that and so I think it makes us incredibly awkward because you think what can I say that's going to make this better what what can I do there is nothing literally there is nothing right it's only time that's going to heal and not even time heals it just changes you know the way that we live with something we live I guess with slightly more at peace with what has happened but still the pain is going to always be there and so I think that's why we are so scared about you know what do I say to somebody um and then I think it's I but I think it's to our detriment that we always you know pretend that loss and death aren't part of the conversation of life because if we understand death more and loss more then we appreciate life in a whole new way what is your relationship? <laughs> now it's getting into yes. the therapy session. No, yeah. go for it. It's okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've been talking about death with the yeah. others. And, yeah. you know, do you do you fear death or do you no. think about it a lot? No. I don't think about death and I don't fear it either at all. But I wonder whether that's something that happens when you have children. Because mm. I know, like, with my mum, she thinks about it because she thinks, oh, my gosh, how are, you know, how are the kids going to cope? How are, uh, Who's going to look after them? But because I don't have children, maybe I, 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 don't, I don't think about it at all. I always think, like, if what will be, will be. I'm and I think it's vulnerable for, for people that have kids. Yeah. It makes them the most vulnerable, probably, mm. because then you're so afraid something's going to happen to them, maybe yeah. more than yourself. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, maybe. And maybe that whole process of actually giving life to something makes you more aware of death as well. I don't know. You have to ask me these questions once <laughs> I've had children, if that ever happens. <laughs> 
and I saw an interview that you did with what's her name, an actress, um, Annette Benny. Yes. Yes. That was so great. Oh, where great. She was yeah, and she was asking you, and you were talking about how you would never have played that part mm -hmm. as you grew up with a single mom yeah. yourself mm -hmm. and how that kind of shaped the way you think about it. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you talk a little bit about that? that yeah, so uh, this was when I was talking with Annette about playing the crack addict Paula in um, Moonlight and I was saying that that's not something I would ever have chosen to do before because I felt as though having you know been a product of a single parent and my mum being so successful and such a positive role model in my life I wanted I made a decision very early in my career that I wanted to portray positive images of women in general and black women in particular and I didn't think playing a crack addict kind of fitted into that picture but I am so glad that Barry Jenkins um, changed my mind our director of Moonlight and um, because I learned so much from playing Paula and I learned that actually she may not her choices are not necessarily positive but she is a progressive um, role because she really manages to turn her life around despite very difficult circumstances at the beginning of the movie and you did that in three days. I did it in three days. <laughs> That's crazy. <Yes>. <laughs> How <laughs> long did you do this in? Oh gosh, I can't remember, but certainly longer than three days. Yeah, a lot longer than three days. People are like, I want to hire you now so you can do that movie <laughs> yeah. in like a week or so. Get a movie done in a week. <laughs> what is it like for you to cry? Do you Does it come too easily or do you have to work hard to get? Do you know, I was in a hospital and I was handed um, a teddy bear from my daughter. Um, you know my character's daughter and I just thought how horrific would it be to be in this situation and the tears just came and they wouldn't stop for four hours I just couldn't stop crying which was great because the cameras were rolling for four <laughs> hours but yeah it was like I didn't have to use a tear stick or anything it just was um, I just thought it's the most horrific thing that could happen what is a tear stick a tear stick is when they like blow um, menthol in your eye and then it starts your tear ducts weeping. Oh, I thought yeah. they used like it, uh, eye drops. drops. No, because if you use eye drops, then they'll just be like one drop and that's all you'll get. But oh. if you've got to cry throughout a scene, then they, they use menthol because it keeps your eyes watering. But when you have to go to like the... Because then you're thinking about something really, really sad and yeah. it affects your body. I was, I was interviewing an actor the other yeah. day who said he died in so many movies and yeah. he got sick afterwards oh my gosh. because his body was kind of like taking all the you know I think that's partly true but then I also think also there's something really quite cathartic about it because it kind of I don't know where I was crying from I don't know what I was crying <laughs> about but something in me needed to be released and I think afterwards as a result of that I felt lighter because I thought I cried for a good solid four <laughs> hours I probably wouldn't do that in everyday life you know what I mean that obviously needed to come out it's great it's gone done <laughs> perfect so you would recommend that to other people yes acting as <laughs> therapy for yeah. sure yeah great thank you so much Thank lovely you. meeting you. you too. <laughs> Hi there, thanks for watching my interview. I hope you liked it. And if you did, there might be some other interviews you like on my channel. So please subscribe by clicking this button down here. And hopefully I'll see you again. Thanks again for watching. Bye.